Presley. Is anybody uh, enjoying this weather or what? Man, that's so good. It's like, you know, when you go, you get that mouthwash and it has that wonderful breath of fresh air, you know. You just breathe outside and you get it, just like that. Uh, it's wonderful, wonderful. So glad that you're here today. Uh, we know that we still have quite a number of people who are out with the COVID, and uh, so we continue to remind you to be kind to each other, be helpful to each other, uh, let us know what's going on. We still have a section over here for those who want to take extra precautions. We will always do that. Uh, our protocols are on our uh, uh, website if you get it so just keep us informed and stay healthy and do the best you can we continue to pray uh, for Cindy <laughs> Cindy's been out for several days now uh, and of course and then there's a whole bunch of other ones but you know how important Cindy is to the life of our church so let's pray for Cindy and let's pray for everyone else who's got it right now because they're they're getting it and uh, we're going to get through this and we're going to continue to worship our Lord and and we're here to do that today and if you would please take a moment register your attendance let us know you're here you do that online uh, if you've got your phone with you just point it at that little QR code uh, that's uh, on your uh, where the pencils used to be or do it after church or before church either way it works just fine uh, if you want to uh, let us know your prayer concerns also that's very important to us let us know who you're praying for and then also, if you want to give online, you can do that. Or if you want to give uh, in one of the boxes as you come in or out, you do it there. Bring it by the church office, mail it in. When Cindy gets back, she'll open them all and deposit them all. So we're, we're happy, and thank you very much for your support of the church. It's been wonderful during these two years. You all are so generous, and we appreciate you so much. Uh, today we have a number of things happening. Uh, our Safe Sanctuary training is happening at 1145 in the CLC this morning. Uh, if you uh, have do anything with children, youth, or tweens, uh, you need to be in that training. If you can't be in, it's about 20, 30 minutes long, it's not that long. If you can't be in that training today, we have a, an alternative for you in the office. We have it on video, and you can come by and set up a schedule to get that done. But please get that done. We need to make sure everybody is uh, safe sanctuary trained. Uh, and again, that will happen today or, or in the office, whatever you let us know. Um, Another thing we need to, if you need to have a bulletin, we do have them out there. If you prefer a bulletin, uh, you pick one up for yourself, and uh, it has all the announcements in it. Of course, all these same announcements are online, uh, and you can pick them there as well. We have a number of things going on in the life of the church now until February and beyond. And as we said earlier, if, uh, if COVID hits us and we can't do something we have planned, well, that's just the way it is. <laughs> we just keep on moving forward. We, go, we do what we can, we plan, we act as though it's going to happen. If it happens, great. If it doesn't happen, well, that's just the way it is. And we just will uh, we'll live with that until we get through this again. Yesterday was a marvelous day in the life of our church. It, we got to see our handicap ramp building team back up and operational, and it is alive and well. We had a great turnout. They built a beautiful ramp all in about, what, four hour, five hours? It's gorgeous. We have a great team. Ministry is alive in this church, and that's what we need to keep go keep on doing. So thank you, thank you, thank you to all who did that. Uh, we appreciate you coming out and making that happen. We also would like to remind you that January is condiment month at the United Board of Missions, and so that's what the little table out there with the mayonnaise and mustard's all about. Remind you to bring that along with oatmeal. We still have oatmeal as our primary responsibility but we also are bringing uh, the condiments this month, especially in January. So uh, please do that. Put them on that table, and that will be fine. Our grief group is going to crank back up this week, right? 19th. Uh, next Saturday from 9 a.m. to noon is cleanup day, which means that today you might want to be thinking about your Sunday school classrooms. Look around. What needs to be thrown out? Bag it up. Put it by your front door, and next Saturday, it's going to be taken out uh, and put in a big old dumpster along with cleaning out the upstairs back here. So we need everybody on deck. Please come and help us uh, that day on 22nd from 9 a.m. to noon. Please say anything we need to add to that? If you come, we'll feed you. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> if you don't come, you don't get fed. It's just as simple as that. Huh? And your soul will be fed no matter what. 
because you'll be, you'll be doing something for the good of the life of the church. Also, that uh, Sunday night, the 23rd, we'll be having our first Sunday evening worship and dinner. Gumbo at 5 in the CLC, and then 6 o'clock, our evening worship. So uh, please uh, put that on your calendar and be ready to come and do, be a part of that. Uh, we're looking at uh, our Wednesday uh, uh, adult Bible study is going to be uh, beginning on January the 26th so that on Wacky Wednesdays adults have something to do beginning on the 26th through March the 2nd Adam Westbrook is going to be teaching an adult class on the way so that's coming up also uh, the Bible 101 has taken the lead on a lot of things and, but one of the things they've taken the lead on is feeding the hungry uh, and they are going to be feeding the homeless and hungry in Port Arthur on January the 29th uh, anyone who wants to join in with the Bible 10 class is welcome to do so. Just contact Dane and he will give you some more info on how you can be a part of that wonderful and vital ministry in the life of our church. And uh, last but not least for me, maybe you've got something else to add to this. We have a pickleball court and we're going to learn how to play pickleball. Uh, and uh, it's especially fun and uh, exciting. And so we're going to have a clinic on February the 5th at 9 a.m. here at the church in the CLC and if it's pretty weather we'll go out there if it's not we'll be inside but come and learn how to play pickleball get a little activity in your life and uh, it'll be fun what did we leave out anything all right let's stand up and let's uh, sing praises to our Lord
you'll join me now in prayer, feel free to bow or kneel at your seats. Uh, but let's uh, join our hearts in unison as we pray to the Father. Holy Father, what a beautiful day it is, the day you called us to be in your house. God, it is a delight to be here in your presence and in the presence of one another. God, you've assembled us to worship you. And today we proclaim your glory in this place. Father, we're delighted that you know us, that you see us, and that you've chosen us. God, we're here. We're here to give you the first fruits of this day. God, help us to do that every day, not just on Sundays, not just on your Sabbath, but to always give you first and best. God, we thank you that even though we're not worthy, that you still call us to be yours. You meet us where we are, even when we don't qualify, even when we're not good enough even when we don't do what you've asked us to, but you meet us there in that place. And you make us be who you called us to be. And so, Father, as we share our gifts with each other, which is what we do, what you've asked us to do, help us to be obedient to you. Lord, help us to be disciplined, so that when you call us and need us, that we are there. Father, we pray that our worship this morning of you is pleasing in your sight. As we sing your praises, and as we humble ourselves before you now, and as we hear the reading of your word, Lord, you know our hearts. You know the needs that we each have and you know where we are, even if we're lost right now. And there may be some of us here, Lord, who don't really know you, but we all have that desire to know you more. And so God, fill us to overflowing with your spirit. God, let us be a light in this dark world so that when others see us, they see you. Help us to plant seeds, Father, seeds that will lead people to you. That's our job here. Lord, let us not be shy. Give us your power. Make us bold before you, Lord. Today, Father, we ask for healing for those who are sick. Lord, there's so many people with COVID. There's so many people with cancer. There's so many people with illnesses of all kinds. And God, we just pray your healing on them. Father, we pray for a strength and faith for us as we pray for them and for them as they heal and as they turn to you. Lord, we ask that you would be with those involved in the hostage situation yesterday at the Jewish synagogue near Dallas. We pray for your healing for those who were affected emotionally and mentally. We pray for the family of the one who was lost. God, protect us. Protect each one of us as you protected them. And now, Father, as we continue our worship, we join together as one body, and we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us as we say together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. 
And now if you'll receive this offering of music as we're mindful of our giving back to God. It is now time for the children and tweens message. Can all the children and tweens come forward? Turn my mic on. Thank you very much. I uh, have a couple of quick announcements to make for you. First, let me say, uh, be in prayer for Treva and the youth. They are at midwinter at Lakeview uh, and having a wonderful time and worshiping with us this morning. Uh, 
And so please keep them in your prayers and all their travels. Also, Nick uh, Huckabee and uh, Lynn Huckabee took them up there in their wonderful uh, RV. And so they went up in style, and they're coming back in style. So uh, be a prayer for all of them as well. Uh, as you can see, we got a bunch of kids up here, and we got a bunch of tweens, and we got a bunch of youth. And this isn't even all of them because a whole bunch of them are missing right now. But, you know, we have reached a point where we needed some help. Uh, and so uh, the uh, Board of Stewards met and agreed unanimously in the fastest vote ever taken to uh, hire Chelsea Osborne to be our new student ministry intern. And uh, she'll work primarily with children, but a little bit with tweens and youth as they, need, as they need her. And we're so glad to welcome you on board, Chelsea. Thank you for all you do. Tammy, take it away. Good morning, boys and girls. Hey, I bet a bunch of you have a lot of special talents and gifts. For instance, some of you like to play sports, right? Some of you <coughs> like to play instruments, yes? Some of you like to sing, right? So there's so many different, uh, some of you like to dance. And if you're my granddaughter, she likes to clean. That, she told me a few months ago, she said, hey, Mimi, I wanna, you want to play a game with me? And I said, sure, Ella, what do you want to play? She handed me a diaper wipe, and she said, it's called the cleaning game. Clean that table. She's three, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but God has given you your special talent or gift, but you know what? He wants you to use it, and he wants you to share it. For instance, this Sunday, what all do you think had to happen for us to have church on Sunday? Number one, the church had to be cleaned, right? Someone had to clean it. Someone had to come in and turn on the lights. Someone had to make sure the heater was on. Someone had to turn on the soundboard. Thank you, Aaron. Someone had to unlock the doors. Pastor needed to get his, his sermon ready. The music people had to practice the songs they were going to sing. And all of this was important to make sure that we had a good church service, right? Right. God has given each of us special gifts that we need to develop. Even though we might have a special gift, we need to share it and we need to practice it so other people can get closer to God. Think about all the people who serve this church and how everyone is important to the, to the success of our church. And in helping others to come closer to God, it also helps them to come closer to God by serving our church. There's a song by a man named Marty Hagen, or Hagen, I don't know how you say that, that speaks about how we all have different gifts, but we're one body in Christ Jesus. And it goes like this. We are many parts. We are all one body. And the gifts that we have are given to share. May the spirit of love make us one indeed. One, the love that we share. One, the hope and despair. And one, the cross that we bear. Jesus loves each and every one of us so very much. And he gave us these special gifts. He has given them to us so that we can use them to bring ourselves closer to him and to also bring others closer to him. Let's pray. Dear Father, help us to know what special gift you have given us. Help us to develop our gifts fully so we can bring other, ourselves and others closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Man, that's like, a, that's like ready, set, go. <laughs> and that's why we need Chelsea. Man, they are just, they're so full of energy and it's so much on Wednesday nights if you haven't been to Wednesday nights and of course the adult, the adult study's coming so if you haven't been to Wednesday nights start coming on that 26th for that adult study because there's food and there's all those all that energy and it will energize you it will definitely energize you you'll be you'll be saying I can do that I can do that <laughs> maybe <laughs> our uh, scripture lesson today is going to come from uh, Paul's letter to the Ephesians 
We're going to be in the fourth chapter looking, uh, starting with the seventh verse. So if you want to turn your Bibles there, you can. Let's hear what Paul has to say to the Ephesians and to us. He says, But to each one of us grace was given according to the measure of the gift of Christ. And therefore, he said, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Now this, he ascended, what does it mean but that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And this is the word of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Each one of us is given according to the measure of the gift of Christ. I love that phrase. That, that phrase in Paul's letter to the Ephesians is appointed for us to hear each year at this time of the year on the Sunday after Jesus' baptism. Last Sunday was the Sunday of the celebration of Jesus' baptism. Um, and because Christ is physically baptized, our baptism becomes possible. Uh, not just the baptism of repentance that was given to the Jews, uh, but also a new kind of baptism that exceeds all uh, of repentance because that new baptism gives us something beyond forgiveness of sins. It gives us the gift of Christ. It gives us the gift of Christ. And so this morning I want us to focus on Paul's message and this gift from a different angle of vision. I want to look at it through our baptism. Because in baptism, we are granted admission into Christ's body, the church. In baptism, we are justified by faith. We are made righteous before God and become a part of the new covenant of God's kingdom. In baptism, quite literally, we become Christians. Baptism is a new beginning, the beginning of our life in Christ and our life in the church. But there is something about baptism which I believe has been de-emphasized for many of us, if not most of us. And what is it, this de-emphasis? And I think it's a serious problem that many Christians have. And so what is this de-emphasis that's going on? What is this thing that some of us, maybe most of us, has lost? Well, here it is. Many of us do not realize that in baptism, we receive the Holy Spirit whose primary job is to reveal to us the gift of Christ. The primary work of the Holy Spirit is to help us know Christ, the gift of Christ, and what that means. Now, we can, of course, say that that gift means that Christ is given to us as a gift and that we are saved as a result of that, and the pro uh, all in the process of, of baptism. And, and, of course, that's true, and it should be obvious. But there is something else that Paul is trying to tell us here about what is meant by the gift of Christ. There is something that we receive in baptism that is more than just our entrance into the life of the church. It's something, it's something more than just starting our path of salvation. So what is it? What's Paul trying to say to us? Well, in order for us to understand what Paul is trying to say to us here in Ephesians chapter 4 and what it means to be a part of the church of Jesus Christ we need to take a little journey back into time and I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to bore you with a lot of historical details but part of why we have a tough time fleshing out what it means to be baptized is because of a movement that began among the Lutherans in the late 17th century Germany called pietism now, as I said, I'm not going to go into the details about how pietism became a, a, a powerful cross-denominational movement and how in America it has become how most people think what it means to be a Christian. 
not going to go there. You can do all that historical study on your own. But ultimately what I want us to realize is that pietism, that pietism that has crept into every single denomination that exists today, that our faith, it, it teaches that our faith is a private matter between you and God and that attending church is good, of course, but one attends church as a choice to service their own personal spiritual needs. So, if we view Paul's words about this gift of Christ through the lens of pietism, that my faith is a personal private matter, then the gift of Christ is given what? For me. Uh, the, the gift of Christ is given for my spiritual needs. That being baptized into the life of the church is about doing the things in the church that serve me best. Well, guess what? Paul absolutely does not leave it there. He won't let us interpret the gift of Christ in private, personal terms. He has something much bigger in mind. What Paul has in mind is truly what it means to be the church. For Paul, Christianity is not about one's private path to salvation. No, it's about people baptized into the faith, functioning together as the church, the body of Christ, and in that mutual bond, we are all saved together. There's a togetherness that's missing there, if we're not careful. Which is the exact polar opposite of what the pietist movement would have us believe. Now, with this in mind, I think we are ready to hear what Paul says about the gift of Christ and why we have received it. Let's go back to the scriptures here. Let's pick up where he talks about, where he says, When he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men and then we'll skip over the next part and then we'll go to that really important part where he says and he gave some to be apostles some to be prophets some to be evangelists some to be pastors and teachers what for the perfecting of the saints plural not singular for the work of ministry whose ministry be thinking about that for the building up of the body of Christ what is clear from this scripture is that the gift of Christ is not, I repeat, it is not for the building up of individual Christians in his or her personal, private, spiritual needs. That's not what it's for. Rather, it is for the perfecting of the saints, others all around us, for the work of ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ, the church. And what is the goal? What is the end point of all of this? What is the gift of Christ supposed to accomplish? Well, there it is, right there in the next passage from Paul, where he says this. <clears throat> he says, this building up is until all arrive at the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man toward the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Go back and look at what he says. Until we, not individually, but until we all arrive that's absolutely correct what he is saying in a nutshell is folks we're in this together we're in this together yes we are individually called to be apostles or prophets or evangelists or pastors or teachers or whatever but who are we called to be that for ourselves no don't think so we are called for the perfecting of the saints, plural, others all around us. We are called for and to the work of ministry. And so the gift of Christ that we receive at baptism equips us for the work of perfecting others for the work of ministry. And thus the true Christian is not, again I repeat, is not a consumer who comes to get something from church. Oh, sorry, so sorry, not really. Rather, the true Christian is an apostle, a prophet, an evangelist, a pastor, a teacher, or whatever. A true Christian 
is a worker of ministry who is baptized into Christ in order to work together for the perfecting of every single one of us. If you think that the Christian life is about your own private, personal path, that you don't have a critical responsibility to others to help them perfect their way through our ministry toward them, then perhaps you unknowingly have submitted yourself to a 350-year-old movement begun by a Lutheran pastor in Germany who thought that his people were talking too much about their faith to each other and not doing anything. And consequently, because of that movement called pietism, the average churchgoer does not see himself or herself as one whose job is to help perfect the rest. Because of that movement, the average Christian does not see themselves as they are a, 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 an educator, a helper, and a healer. And because of that movement, we don't see ourselves as God sees us. But my friends, we do not have to be satisfied with our own weaknesses, do we? And what is more, we cannot afford to be satisfied with this weakness in particular. And why? Because our salvation truly does depend on the church being the church in the fullness of what that means, which is, and here it is, in a nutshell, if you want to know what the church's definition is, an army of those who minister to one another, who encourage one another, who educate one another, who heal one another, so that they can be the body of Christ about doing his work. In other words, we're all on staff here. There are no ordinary Christians. There's no just, I'm just a member. Instead, we all have been given, what? The gift of Christ. We are called, every single one of us, with absolutely no exceptions. We are called to build up the body of Christ, his church. The sad irony of the pietistic movement is that as it began to dissolve the bonds of churchliness that had existed for centuries, it also began to dismantle the true fulfillment of the Christian life, which is so simple it's not even funny, which is communion with God and communion with each other. Our faith is indeed personal, but it is not private. It is personal, but it is not private. Because there is nothing more personal than persons being in communion with one another, is it? Nothing more personal. So how will we use this gift of Christ? How will we build up the body of Christ to the perfection of the saints right here at Wesley United Methodist Church? How will we do that? Hmm. That is the question that is before us, is it not? And how you answer that is entirely up to you personally. So, let's do this until we all arrive at the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man toward the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Amen? Glory to God. Glory to God. And let us pray. Oh, Lord, forgive us. Forgive us for once again thinking that it's all about us. It's all about me. Help us to put ourselves aside, even if it's just for a minute, Lord. Help us to put ourselves aside, to focus on each other until we all arrive at the fullness of Christ and become who you made us to be. All this we ask in the name of Christ our Lord. Would you stand together as we affirm our faith in God? For where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is the one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. 
from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Would you remain standing as we sing our closing song? Together! is no such thing as an ordinary Christian. Everybody has a ministry, no exceptions. Amen? Go in God's peace. What a friend.